Hey everybody, so this video is for Parlor TTS, which is essentially the very first open source TTS, which is text to speech tool that's available uh, on the market. And then so just introducing it, starting it off on the Hugging Face page. So if you want the very simplest introduction that you can possibly get to this model, just go to Hugging Face and then they have it here. Uh, and then it's TTS Parlor Mini and then they have the TTS Mini, TTS Medium and TTS Large. The thing I hate about um, on these Hugging Face models and why I don't like generally like using TTS models on Hugging Face is that you're very limited. Like you get like a, a sentence <laughs> of output and that's that's all you can do, uh, right? So if that's okay, you just want to test it out and you're looking for a sentence and you just want the most basic way to test out the model, this is a way to do it. And good thing about TTS or, or parlor TTS is, is that uh, essentially it works via prompts, right? So if we look at the examples that they give, um, it's uh, like a male speaker with a low pitched vo voice delivering his voice, his words at a fast pace in a small confined space with a very clear audio and an automated t and an animated tone or a female speaker with a slightly low pitched quite monotone voice delivers her words at a slightly faster than average pace in a confined space with very clear audio. So what you can see here, the very clear and very descriptive descriptions that you can give the model with the prompts with regards towards the voices. So I think that's an interesting feature um, of this model overall. And I'll show you with some of the uh, outputs here, but it definitely does affect the model quite significantly um, as far as the voice outputs that you get by adjusting this. But so let's say you want to go uh, like a, a step further here. So uh, and go a little bit more advanced. The next place that you would look is the GitHub repository, which is here uh, for this particular model. And then so we look at the particular GitHub repository here. Um, and a few things to, to point out with the GitHub repository that make it very simple to set up and install the model. So from here, I went and then I, I just went and took the code that they offer on their readme. Uh, and then I just went and opened up a Google Colab environment here. And I've got it spun up now. Uh, and then it's very simple. They just have you pip install this package. So I pip install this parlor package. It takes about two minutes to install and then you have to restart the environment. Uh, and then I'll take about 30 seconds to <laughs> install to, to run again. So about two minutes and 30 seconds. Um, and then uh, here you they give you the option of either like uh, so device CUDA zero uh, L CPU meaning that you can run it with uh, CPU or GPU only or GPU or CPU only um, and then so you if you are observant you'll notice that I have T4 on in this instance so I've got GPU on <laughs> and then I've ran this the first time with uh, just CPU and it was taking about like two and a half minutes to execute with just CPU. Uh, and then I was like, yeah, I'm not kind of tired of that. And then so you can see it's taking about a minute to execute with uh, GPU uh, on these longer sentences that I'm giving it, right? So um, it's like uh, about like one and a half times faster, 150% increase, uh, I'd say, with um, GPU as opposed to CPU. So quite significant. Um, as far as the increase, does it increase the, the, the quality? I'm not a hundred percent sure because I kind of, um, messed up with my prompting of the male voice, which I'll show you here in a second, as far as the outputs, but this is the code that they provide you again. And so it's very simple, right? It's just, um, you've got your code here and then the model. And then, so this is loading the mini model. And then, so they have many medium and large, so you can load a larger model like medium or large going to take longer to, to go um, and to, to, to generate. Um, and then, uh, so they, the next thing here is that you give it the prompt and then the description, right? And the prompt is just what you want it to say. And then that, that, that long description, um, and then it's going to output a file <laughs> is a very important thing that you'll see here. So you'll name the file and then you'll get your output. Uh, and then so you're going to want to take this output and this file, uh, this download that, that it gives you, uh, and then you're going to want to like go through and, and actually like view the, the download, right? So just being like, a, like letting you know that up front here. Uh, and then so I've got the, the outputs of this model here. And then so we can play through some of the outputs. This is the first hey, one. Hey, how are you doing today? Kind of the very first, uh, my very first attempt, just to make sure that it works. Hey, how are you doing today? Hey, cool. how are you doing today? Cool. And then so we know it works. Uh, and then so, I, you know, I, I kind of went up from there. I wanted something a little bit more advanced. 
hey, how are you doing today? Uh, and then I, I same thing. But, uh, and then so then I started switching it up between, uh, so this is a, like a male and female so voice. Uh, and then so uh, let's go here. Here is some longer and varied text for the sample. I went to the store to get some milk. She sells seashells by the seashore. I'd buy that for a dollar. Cool. And then so this is... Um, CPU uh, output, right? So just noticing it. Like the only difference that I notice with CPU output is it just takes longer. Um, but so. Here is some longer and varied text for the sample. I went to the store to get some milk. She sells seashells by the seashore. So I'd buy that for a dollar. I'd buy that for a dollar. Sounds great to me. Uh, and then so this is the male voice, and then I I I, I wanted it to I I like. I, got, I mixed up high and low, like I never wasn't into it, never into like voices and, and training and things like that. But so uh, I'll show you the, the male voice output. Here's some longer and varied text for the sample. I went to the store to get some milk. She sells seashells by the seashore. I'd buy that for a dollar. Here's some longer and varied text for the sample. I went to the store to get some milk. She sells seashells by the seashore. I'd buy that for a dollar. Listening to them, I can say that possibly there's a like the the GPU, which is the second one that we're listening to, is less tinny overall. Like that, I, I noticed that in some of these outputs that there is like that kind of tinniness to them. Um, and then so if anything, utilizing the GPU does seem to, and it, it could resolve that overall. Um, and then so just going back here to the the collab environment, um, the next thing that they offer, and I want to get into, is that they, they and I think that this is very important to cover within this video. I think it'll be something that a lot of people are interested in, which is training this model, right? So let's talk about this, because uh, you can train this model. Uh, One million percent, you can train this model. Anyone can do it. Uh, go, 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 knock yourself out. Um, but here's the important thing within that is, so let's go to the documentation here. Uh, and then, so the very first thing that sets me off within this is that they make like multiple mentions uh, within this that you can enable multiple GPUs uh, within this and then so that's kind of an alarm bells for me and then so I start reading through this right like is that like I'm like okay you can enable multiple GPUs why would I need to do that um, I'm starting to like question a few things within this like how long is it actually like what's the training process within this how long does it actually take and how much GPU do I actually need to train it right um, and then so you go down and you go through training uh, I'm not I'm gonna skip through all of this because we're gonna go to the bottom line here um, which is, there we go, uh, this right here. Um, Scale into multiple GPUs. Using distributed data parallelism is trivial. Simply run accelerate config, so it's really trivial to do it, uh, and select the multi-GPU option, specifying the IDs of the GPUs you wish to use. The above script can then be run using DDP with no code changes, cool, in our case, we used a node of 8H180 gigabyte GPUs to train Parlor TTS uh, for around four days on eight GPUs total. So if you've got eight H100s laying around and you've got four days that you can allow them to spin up total and, and just go wild, you can train this model. Um, so like... Uh, you don't have h 100 laying around for four days. And if you were to do this via AWS or something along those lines for a cluster of h 100s, I, I'm just going off the top of my head. I think you'd be paying, I don't know, let's say $5 an hour on the, like I'll give it like the most conservative, right? $5 an hour times 24 times four, uh, per GPU, because it's it's not gonna be five dollars for eight of them. It's gonna be like like twenty five dollars per hour on the minimum uh, for eight of them. Let's say, and that's that's really conservative. Times twenty four times eight uh, times four. Uh, that's a lot of money. So, uh, like, they start seeing what, what why it's like. I don't like it's pretty cost prohibitive to train this thing overall but so if you're like the good thing is is that this is an open source tts model right so that's exactly what they claim it is it works here's the code for it i'll leave the code so you can play around with the collab in the description it works perfectly like it, it works exactly as they say it does it's cool to play around with in, in, in python uh training these models and uh, training these tts models 
it's very expensive still. Like, uh, and then so to me, uh, that's where it comes down. Like, that's where I stop playing around with um, these CTS models. Like, it's it's fun to play around with them as to prompting them, but like training them, it's it's uh, like when we get into like costs on on training of research, that's where I start getting like big <laughs> into like let's maybe look into different avenues of research overall. So just highlighting this. Uh, it's cool, cool to check out, expensive to use overall if you want to train it, but if you just want a pre-trained model and, and you're cool with this description and, and, and changing the voices around and, and going through, really cool. One thing that you'd want to adjust with this and just highlighting this, the last thing that I'll highlight within this uh, is that you want to adjust the um, default output because it's going to default to around 2,058 tokens uh, and then their default code here doesn't provide it. You would just add like um, default number of tokens and then you can increase it like say if you want like 10,000 or 20,000, right? If you want a lot more, you'd be waiting a long time for, for like 20,000 tokens. Uh, this is like 300 tokens maybe and you can see it's taking a minute right so like it's it's not fast <laughs> uh, just hiding that overall so it's going to take some time but uh, the cool thing with running it in python with this in, in this type of environment as opposed to this uh, is you you can do a lot more than a sentence overall right just going to take a long time you can go make coffee whatever do whatever um but so yeah if you like this type of content please like and subscribe thank you very much